Mm, hello Raj and Don. I wanted to record a small video so you can see a potential backdrop that we could use for our session in San Francisco in BSR. So here I have mapped a simplified version of the Nike Hyperdunk basketball shoe supply chain. Again, some of the information is completely made up. Uh, the locations are also made up, but at least to illustrate the complexity of even uh, a simplified version of the network. So the network is, is composed by four different kinds of elements. We have retail stores or demand points that are like this little sticker. We have distribution centers that are used to consolidate movements. We have manufacturing facilities where, we, where products are manufactured. And we have raw materials as well. And the supply chain, as you can see, just by looking at this map, even in this simple example, I, uh, I put a, a location here in Qingdao uh, in China, and, um, and we have a product uh, in this case, a Nike Hyperdunk basketball shoe with three basic raw materials components that are, need to be put together in assembly or manufacturing a sole, a mid sole, and a mesh sleeve, and the names we can change. Uh, just uh, for purposes of this example, I just sourcing the material for the mid sole from South Africa, I'm sourcing the material uh, of the mesh sleeve from India and we're sourcing the material of the um, sole from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, all these, all these uh, products, uh, these components are moved via ocean. You can see here that when I click on the link, we see ship um, into uh, the Kingdong. I have not put uh, too much detail uh, into the flows. It could be stopping different ports, etc. but that's a little bit not what we're trying to do here. We have here, uh, finally, um, from this manufacturing facility, it, everything flows to the world. Let's talk a look at the demand points before we, we see how products get to these retail stores. I have modeled here a few retail stores across the Americas. We have a retail stores in Santiago, and uh, we have uh, 600 units uh, per month, maybe, that are ordered in this location or per week. And um, we have Buenos Aires, 1,000 units, uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Bogota, Mexico City and in the United States. Let me zoom in a little bit um, so we could see better the United States map. Uh, we have here um, Miami, uh, we have Miami, um, Atlanta, and in the Northeast, um, New York, Boston. We have also Toronto, Chicago, and on the West Coast, I've included just three main cities. Los Angeles, San Francisco, and um, Seattle. So that's a little bit of our demand. Uh, the way we uh, source, uh, serve the demand in the Americas, uh, products, as I mentioned, come from China. Um, we have a distribution center in Singapore where the products are sorted and moved in different um, places across the world. In this case, they get to the, uh, our Los Angeles uh, facility, the distribution center of Los Angeles, that then serves all these different retail stores on the West Coast directly. Uh, for the East Coast, uh, we move our products into distribution center in, in Memphis, Tennessee, and from there we source in North America. But also we send products here from Memphis into Panama, uh, and from Panama we service all the other main retail stores that we have modeled in this supply chain. So that's, that's the, um, the basic supply chain, and let me just show you a couple of features. You see here a CO2 number, Ignore this other, please. But the CO2 number is computed based on the transportation the basic data that we have put into the supply chain. If you click on any link, you have, for example, truck. And if you go in and take a look at the details, you see that there's a CO2 emission calculation that is derived from the, all the flow of demand that goes to this particular link, the emission factor per mile, kilogram mile, and the estimation of the shipments based on the demand and the per characteristics and the CO2 that you see up here is actually the total CO2 of the transportation flows that go through this supply chain. We see that we're using road uh, truck in the case of uh, sourcing from um, the Los Angeles uh, DC into the retail store. We're using a truck as well to move products into the distrib distribution center in Memphis and everything is road. Uh, to go to South America, we actually using air in this case. Uh, that's the, uh, the the current structure into Panama and from Panama to all these major capital cities through air. So we can start doing some basic analysis here. One analysis is well, what happens if I move some of the shipments from truck to to uh, rail? Uh, our emissions are 123,000. If I'm able to move this to rail, let me see what happens. Uh, oops, uh, something happened here. Let me see to truck. 
um, 147 truck and then if I go back to rail uh, we have uh, 145,000 tons. So we have only 2,000 um, tons of uh, pounds of CO2 that were saved by moving from truck to rail. Well, I'm not sure if I want to go through that travel. Let me leave it back to truck. Uh, let's go back here and maybe start looking at our distribution into the rest of the world. We're using air uh, to move this shipment. Maybe what we could do is we can find a way to directly connect this shipment into Panama from ocean directly from Los Angeles. What will this do? So I can go here, delete this link, and I'm gonna uh, delete this link. And let me just go here and connect this particular uh, lane oops, sorry, via ocean to Panama. Uh, we can see the emissions reduced significantly, in this case, 20,000 pounds of CO2 by just finding a way to move this via ocean from Los Angeles to Panama. Let me uh, redesign my network and try to be more creative here. And if, if I, for example, add a new distribution center in Brazil and um, maybe near the port of Santos, let me just add a distribution center in Santos in Brazil uh, for my Nike Hyperdunk trucks, um, shoes. And let me just not serve uh, Brazil uh, through air, but instead let me just make this flow via ocean to Santos. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, I will then serve that particular uh, retail store uh, via truck from the DC of Santos to this retail store. And now we have 93,000 pounds of CO2 for our supply chain. And since I now have uh, our, our Santos operation, why not um, source uh, re re service our South American uh, friends from a different location. So let me just use the Port of Santos. Maybe I go, go to the Guarulhos Airport and decide uh, to move air not from Panama but from Brazil. Uh, of course, there will be other considerations to take into account. But if I, I just get uh, these retail stores service from um, the Brazil. I actually can reduce my, my footprint even further to 65,000 tons of CO2. Anyway, so there's a, a lot of things that I did in this particular example, but as you can see, transportation uh, networks, if you have the capability of looking at the global flows, there's lots of opportunities for reduction, and we can use this in the conference in a simplified way if you are interested in.